Algebra 2, Concept 7b. In this concept, you're going to learn a method to graph quadratic functions in standard form of their equation. So let's look at some vocabulary and definitions. So standard form of a quadratic function looks like this. It's y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. And that is where a, b, and c are numbers. Constants, we call them. One other point that you can find in um, a quadratic in this form is the point 0, comma, c. So whatever the c value is, and that point will be the y-intercept. Sometimes it's just nice to be able to find one more point. <laughs> For the vertex, again, we talked about this in the last concept, <clears throat> is either the highest or the lowest point on the graph of a quadratic called a parabola. So if it's the highest, we call it the maximum, and the graph is opening downward. If it's the lowest, we call it a minimum, and the graph is opening upward. And then finally, axis of symmetry. Again, it's a line that divides a parabola into mirror images. In standard form, the formula to find it is x equals the opposite or negative of the b value divided by 2 times a. So here are the steps to graph a quadratic in standard form. Just like in vertex form, you want to look at the equation and anticipate any transformations if you can. You can anticipate a few. The first thing you'll do is you'll find the axis of symmetry and you'll be able to do it using that little formula. So you'll pick out the a, b, and c values, the constants, and then take the negative or opposite of b divided by 2a. <clears throat> the second thing you'll do is you'll find the vertex x, y. So the x value of the vertex will be that equation of the axis of symmetry, and to find the y value, you will plug in the x value into the equation, and then you'll have the vertex. You can find the y-intercept if you would like, if you need an extra point. I usually don't do that in the graphing in the notes, but just know that you can. And then, just like before, you're going to make a t-chart Start with the vertex and then plug in two values in the negative direction and two in the positive direction. So let's look at example number one. You can see that this is in standard form because you have an x squared and an x value. You don't have any parentheses. It doesn't look like vertex form. So the first thing you want to do is to pick out those constants a, b, and c. So your a value is in front of the x squared, which is 3. Your b value is in front of the x term, which is negative 6. You take the sign, if there's an, um, whatever the sign is in front of it. And then the c value is positive 1. Now we're going to jump down and find the axis of symmetry using that little formula. So the opposite of negative 6 is positive 6, divided by 2 times 3. So 6 divided by 6 equals 1. So now we have the x value of the vertex along with the axis of symmetry. To find the y value of the vertex, we're going to plug in that number into that original equation, and that will give us negative 2. So now we know the coordinates of the vertex, positive 1, negative 2. And that goes in our table right in the middle. We plug in our values in the negative and the positive direction. And remember, you're going to put them into the equation, and I recommend plugging them into your calculator just as I have them written there. And then you do that for each of your x values. <clears throat> You're going to graph those values. And then we can anticipate just from the a value that it's going to open up because it's a positive a value. And it's going to be narrow because that a value is greater than 1. That's the only transformation we can anticipate when an equation is in standard form. So now let's talk domain and range. So remember, for a quadratic, our domain is going to be all real numbers. We can plug in any real number for x and get a real number for y. And then our range will start at the y value of the vertex, negative 2. And since the graph opens up, it's all those values that are greater than or equal to negative 2. So now sketch in your axis of symmetry. It's not a solid line. It needs to be a broken or dashed line. And then if you want, you can just put an arrow towards that. In this case, it's a minimum point of negative 2. And that's how you graph in standard form. Whoop. 
Now let's look at this next equation, also in standard form. We're going to anticipate with our a value that of negative 2 that we're going to have an x-axis reflection and our graph is going to be a stretch. It's going to be narrow. So our a value is negative 2. And let's back that up just a little bit. B value, I can do it, is negative 8, and our C value is positive 1. So now let's find our axis of symmetry. So the opposite of negative 8 is 8, divided by 2 times negative 2, which would be negative 4, and then that gives us negative 2. Plug that into your equation for x to get your y value um, of your vertex. So our vertex is negative 2, 9, and that goes in the middle of our chart. Just like we've been doing for many concepts, you're going to plug in values in the negative and the positive direction. And then graph those, anticipating that this parabola is going to open down and be a little narrower than the parent. So our domain is all real numbers. We can plug in anything for x and get a real number for y. And our range will start at the y value of the vertex, as always, at 9. And since it opens down, will be all the y values that are less than 9. So let's sketch in that axis of symmetry and just show where that, in this case, it's a maximum since our graph opens down. <clears throat> now this example says, find the minimum or the maximum value of this equation. Well, look at the equation. You can tell right off the bat that we've got a graph that is going to open up because that a value is positive. To find the minimum or maximum, we want to find the vertex. So to do that, the first thing you want to do is to pick out a, b, and c, which I just did. Remember, we take the negatives or the subtraction values with the numbers. So we have 1 half, negative 2, and negative 1. Then we're going to take the opposite of b, which is positive 2, and divide it by 2 times a half. 2 times a half is 1. So the x value of the vertex is 2. Then plug that into the equation to get the y value of the vertex. So y is going to equal negative 3. We know that this graph, because the a value is positive, is going to open up. So that means that this um, vertex is a minimum. We're going to have a lowest point. So let's just make note it opens up. And then to name the actual minimum value, we name the y value of a coordinate, negative 3. Our domain, as always, is going to be all real numbers. And since it's opening up, our y values will be greater than or equal to that y value of the vertex, negative 3. So we don't even have to graph to know if we have a minimum or a maximum value for our vertex. So this graph, I think it's kind of interesting, shows the average units of electricity shown or used in homes compared to the temperature, and the temperature is in Celsius. So you can see that as the temperature is colder, more electricity is used, and then it warms up, and that electricity amount decreases and then increases as it the temperatures increase. So it goes your heating and then you're not using either and then probably using air conditioning. So is um, a linear or quadratic function better uh, model for this graph? So look at the shape of these data points. Notice they do not look like a straight line. They look like a parabola. So we're going to choose a quadratic function that would give us a graph that looks like that, a U-shape. And then if it's linear, we don't think it is. So let's skip to if it's quadratic. If the coefficient or number in front of x squared be positive or negative. Well, it's opening up, so it's going to be positive. All right, independent practice. So we have done all the types of problems that you are, will encounter on the independent practice. So pause the video, do those problems, and then come back and check your work. All right, check your work on this first one. You should have picked out the A, B, and C values, found the axis of symmetry. <clears throat> Plug that into your equation to get the Y value of the vertex. And then see that our vertex is at negative 2, 
sorry, negative 1, negative 2. Then create a table of values and plot those, anticipating that our graph is going to open up and be the same width as the parent. Make sure you sketch in that axis of symmetry after you identify your domain and range. And there is our, in this case, minimum point. Hopefully you identified that this graph would have a minimum because it opens up. You're going to pick out your A, B, and C value so that you can get at the X value of the vertex. And then take that value of negative 2 and plug it into the equation to find the Y value. And that gives you the vertex, which we know is going to be a minimum. And in particular, if we have to name one value, we say that the minimum value of this parabola is at where y is negative 19. And then our last one, hopefully you noticed that the shape was an upside down U shape, a parabola shape. And so that would mean that our coefficient or a value of x squared should be negative because it opens down. This concludes the notes on graphing in standard form.